So let's make our very first program using NetBeans and Java. First thing you need to do is double click on the NetBeans IDE 8.0.2 icon and that will open up NetBeans on your system. Might take a little bit of time since it's loading modules. Next thing we need to do in Java all applications are stored within our projects so you'll click File, New Project. It opens up a window and asks you what type of project do you want to create. We want to make sure that you click Java and Java application. Now this is a little confusing because this area right here almost makes you want to type in the name of the project you want to create but actually that's a filter. So you'll leave that empty, leave Java, Java application and then click Next. This is where you now type in the name of your Java program. I'm going to type in first program. I'm not going to have any spaces. Notice I capitalized the first letter of each word. That's to make your program more readable in your file system. Leave everything else the way it is and just click the finish button. Make sure that that button right there, create main class, is checked and then click the finish button. What happens is your system will go out and create a folder to keep all of your Java files. Most of the time those folders are kept in another folder in your My Documents NetBeans projects and if you notice there's our first program folder that was just created a package in Java is simply a folder on your hard drive it's a place where all the files needed to create your program are kept this is the source code that is brought up notice it says package first program once again that's the name of the folder notice the slash asterisk and the asterisk slash this is a multiple line comment you don't have to have all of these extra asterisks, but they were doing it to try to make it stand out. In fact, you could do other things, like even add extra asterisks around those lines. What you want to do when you write a program is make sure your code is readable. A comment you will definitely want to put in your program is the following. Author. And then also, description this program will display whether or not one variable notice I can drop to the next line is greater than another variable or equal to the variable that's a comment you want to make sure you put the author and description in every program that you write you can actually get rid of this one just highlight delete notice that special keywords in Java are highlighted for you public class first program this means we're creating a program called first program notice the F and the P are capitalized Java is case sensitive remember package is just the directory on your file system where it will store all of your files I'm gonna get rid of this comment also we don't need it and then we have public static void main string args. We'll talk more about this in class, but what this is telling you is that in every Java application, you need to have a piece of code called main. And that says when you run your application, this is where you start executing all your code. I'm going to drop into this method, that's called a method and declare two variables. A variable is simply a holding location in memory, similar to what you did in VBA. It's like a pocket on a pair of pants. You can put something in it and hold it and change it, put other things in it, and change the value that's in it. And I'm going to declare a variable called first and second. We have a variable called int. Int says I'm an integer value. I'm a number. I'm going to declare the variable I first and then a semicolon. The semicolon is used to tell the computer that's the end of the statement. I'm all done with that statement. I'm going to declare another variable int I second semicolon. Now I put the little I in front of the variable name and it's actually part of the variable name now and it's called Hungarian notation. The reason I do that is to make your code more readable later on in your source code you might actually see a variable called I first 
that little i in front should give you an indication that it's going to hold an integer value or a number. I can now assign a value to each of the variables, simply saying the variable name equals some number semicolon. Let's do it also for the other variable, i second equals 20 semicolon. Now each of those variables have a value stored in them. We can retrieve that value, we can change that value, we can look at that value. It's a way the computer can actually store information and retrieve it for use later on. Now I want to compare those values. We do that with an if statement. It's called a selection construct. If, parentheses, I first is equal to, put the double equal sign, I second, curly brace, curly brace. The curly braces are used to keep blocks of code together. Otherwise, Java only looks at one line of code. So we'll have an opening curly brace and then a closing curly brace to try to keep lines that work together to stay together to the computer. This logic says if the contents of I first, which is equal to 10, is equal to the contents of the variable I second, which is equal to 20, I want to do something. And what I will do is the following, system.out.println I first is equal to I second. System.out.println is code that's already been written for you in Java. The whole purpose of print line is to display something to your screen. That print line source code is found in the system.out portion of Java that's written on your system. All you have to do is know where to find the code and then you can call that code. Else if I first is greater than I second. Now I'm just going to start copying and pasting code because time is money and I want to save time. I first is greater than I second. Else. Let me explain this code. The first part says if the contents of I first are equal to the contents of I second, I'm going to display the computer screen I first is equal to I second. Otherwise, if the contents of I first are greater than the contents of I second, I'm going to display I first is greater than I second. Otherwise, I'm going to display I first is less than I second. Now I didn't actually have to do this if I first is less than I second because I've already checked to see if they were equal I already checked to see if it was greater than so instead of the making instead of making the computer do another comparison which will slow it down just a fraction of, of time I'm just gonna go with the default and that's what the else does it's like the garbage collector it says hey if you're not right and if you're not right then I'll take everything else Notice the curly braces, the matching curly braces for each of those blocks of code. I'm going to now save the program by clicking on this little symbol. And then I'm going to click on the green arrow to run the program. The computer will then take the source code in Java, compile it, and run it. Remember, the JRE is what runs the program. The JDK is what allows you to create a computer program in Java. Look down here in the output and it says I first is less than I second. Let's go change the number. Let's make I first equal to 20 and I second equal to 20. We'll save it again and run it. The output is I first is equal to I second. Let's go change I first to be 30. I second to be equal to 20. Save it. Run it. I first is greater than I second. One important thing you need to remember is that when you write source code, you might make mistakes. We can have logical errors, and we can also have debugging errors, or errors that you've made that don't match Java syntax or Java source code. Remember, source code 
are the Java statements the computer will turn into something it can run, and it has to make sense to the computer. Logical errors are those errors that match the source code. In other words, the computer says, yeah, that's fine. You're using the right syntax to write my program. However, logically, maybe it doesn't make any sense. In this case, we tested our program and all the possible logical outcomes to make sure that our program worked. I first was equal to second, or I first is greater than I second, otherwise I first is going to be less than I second. Those are important things for you to do whenever you write a source code or write a Java program. Make sure you test every portion of the program. We've now created, compiled, and ran a Java program. If we went out and looked in our Windows Explorer under that first program folder, there's another folder now called Source. There's our first program. That's our package. That's the name of the package right there. Notice the lowercase f and the lowercase p. Double click on that. The first program.java, that's your source code. In fact, I could right mouse click that and open with Notepad, and there's all the source code that I wrote. That's how you write a program in Java. Good luck.